Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Torrens Laboratory. As some of you already know, I've traveled away from Dual Universe for a while and I'm currently dwelling in Pax Day with the Golden Company. Um, I've been streaming a whole heck of a lot because, well, reasons. But I thought I would create a little how-to video on doing precise incremental placement of game elements using... <gasps> what do you mean? Alright, so... Game elements, um, this game uses game elements, not voxels, um, but still, some pretty incredible things can be built. Um, the nice thing about game elements is it gives everything sort of, you know, the medieval feel that they're looking for. They can control the look and feel. You don't have things that look like they're from some science fiction show. Not that there's anything wrong with science fiction, as we all know, but their goal here is, you know, pseudo-medieval feel. Um, and we've been doing some castles and all that kind of stuff. But we like to stretch the limits. So um, these blocks right here that I built these steps with, I'm going to call this one unit, for lack of a better term. So these are one by one block of pavement. Um, and we can do some stairs by placing them like this. All right. But that's not good enough. We don't want those shallow little beastly stairs. These are stair elements. Um, they're okay, but they tend to become ubiquitous and therefore undesirable um, in, in bulk anyway. But we, you know, we can do some steeper stairs like these. Um, and we've got a, an arch here happening, which is nice. Um, but you can see that my placement here is much finer, much more refined than one block across. Um, so we're going to talk about how we achieve that. So we've got our one unit block right here. This block unit um, has snap points only on the corners here and here. And so if we're going to place another one of these units, that's where our snap points are. We can uh, rotate around our snap points. Um, the game also gives you uh, 24 clicks of rotation around in a circle, um, which is 15 degree increments. 15 times 24 is 360. All right. Um, and... But we can split that up quite a bit. So we have another game element here, or beams. There's a whole bunch of different pillars and beams, but all of the beams, um, we're just going to grab the short one right here, have um, an additional snap point in the center. So if I take place this beam right here, um, go like this, get a snap point there, a snap point there. So now I can make my stairs twice as steep using those snap points instead of just the corners, uh, which would be good, but it's not good enough. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this in half again. So if we do, we're going to use triangles. Your geometry teacher will be so happy with you if you start playing with this stuff. So I'm going to go here. Boom, boom. All right. As you can see now, this point right here, because it's an equilateral triangle, is halfway in between this po post and this post, all right? However, uh, this point right here is also, you know, offset on the y-axis there. When we want it to be in line with this point right here and this point right here. So we're going to go to the halfway point and basically double back also at 15 degrees. And now this point right, and we could do the same thing over here and make another, all right, we don't need it though. So this point right here is not only is it halfway between on the x-axis, but it's also in line on the x-axis. We can place this bar right here. Um, and we can rinse and repeat this process. Um, we can be much more minimalist about it, if we like. From right here, we can just go one tick this way, which is 15 degrees, and then again, 15 degrees. I mean, this is a 30 degree angle right here. And then um, bring this back. Boom. And then we delete the very, very useful, but no longer necessary, gratuitous materials. And now we split that up yet again. All right. Um, which is really handy, and we can build our stairs now uh, to be significantly steeper. So if we step out of the way over here, boom, and we grab our block here. So this one is going to be our first tick up 
here. Let me go another tick up. Let me go here. Let me go another tick up. And here. And another tick up. And here. And another tick up. And now we have much steeper stairs. And we can and we can climb them gracefully and easily. So this is how you get significantly steeper stairs without using um, the built-in stair elements. And um, and at some level, how I began this process right here. All right. Um, when I did these stairs, uh, I don't want to go straight up at 45 degrees and then down straight down at 45 degrees. That would give me a triangle, um, not a curve. So we staggered a little bit. We For a little bit, we went up at 45 degrees. So we did... You know, one up, one forward, one up, one forward, one up, one forward. And then we did two forward and one up, two forward and one up, and then three forward and one up, and then four forward and one up, and then six forward. Um, and then we started reversing the process and going down on the other side. All right. Um, and that gives us a nice little pseudo arch, um, which is pretty handy. The truth of the matter is we can actually get much, much finer uh, increments than these uh, quarter units if we wish to have them. Um, and we can do some fancier angle math. Um, I recommend if you have, you haven't gone to calculatorsoup.net, calculatorsoup.net. Uh, yes. Cal no, calculatorsoup.com. They've got, um, a nice polygon generator, um, and triangles theorems calculator. Um, and so you can figure out the length of your hypotenuses and your angles and all that kind of stuff and work out some additional triangles to get some additional spaces. But for instance, if I do that same 15 degrees over here, but I go two units up, and then I go, um, to, to, we're making an equilateral triangle again. So because the reason for the equilateral triangle is so that our x-axis is uniform. So we're doing an uh, equilateral triangle. This is a 30-degree arc here. So 30 degrees on a two-unit one. Then this side right here is actually 1.034. Uh, 1.035 units. All right. So... We're going 1.035 units this way, and then back one unit, which means that this, the end of this unit right here, sorry, let me place it, boom, on this snap point. But this one right here is 1.35 units this to, to that way, and then one unit back, which means that if I rotate this out, we're actually only... 0.035 units forward. I could repeat this process and basically make a very, 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 very smooth slope. So, for instance, if I take, we're gonna we're gonna do this a couple of these, um, and we can we can go up. Um, I should have. I'm gonna I'm gonna put one right where this one is right here, um, but I'm gonna go up one tick. All right. Um, now, from this one right here, repeat this process. But rather than do the single piece, we've got a... Um, this is three units. So we're going to go out here and then just count off um, one unit, two units. And again, achieve our 30-degree angle. And come back to here and just use this snap point right here. But place our little one and again go up one tick. Come on, there we go. Boom. Um, and then delete these. So I could make my um, arch working with something like this. Um, and you see we've we've got a very a very very steep slope 
starting to happen right there. And it would be uniform, right? So I can actually like climb up and over that um, because it's still a slope, it's not a solid wall. Um, and if I wanted to, I could make a very steep set of stairs. Um, it wouldn't work particularly well um, and um, and it wouldn't work at all going down. You would sort of start to jump going down. Um, but it would be kind of cool. And you can get some nice visual effects doing this. So again, using triangles to have, you know, two sides be equilateral, which makes the top of our triangle or the bottom, depending on your point of view, right, um, be a slightly different length than one, right, gives you the ability to incrementally place things in and out. And this is the the most seamless way to kind of arbitrarily pick things. And you can do that. That uh, The reason I chose that example is I'm going out a particular amount and back a particular amount. Um, that particular one gives you a very small increment, 0 0.35, which is, you know, really a little tiny tick. The nice thing about using the, the math way of doing it is you wind up with very, very precise increments um, in 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 succession, which gives you nice clean results. If clean results is what you're looking for, um, there's beautiful work that's being done by just holding down um, the shift key when you place elements, um, which gives you the opposite result, right? So I could, for instance, let me bring my tool back up here, grab um, something like this pillar, go down. So it's placed flush. Um, if you hold down the shift key, you free place. It's not snapping to anything. Um, and I can, like, you know, place one of these, come over here, rotate it some amount, place another one, come over here, rotate some random amount, um, place another one, come over here, rotate, you know, and just keep... And you wind up with cobblestone, right? Um, you can also place other elements that have... Um, some extrusion or some shape to them, like this one. Um, we can sink this down, right? So here again, I can free place this, maybe lift it up a little bit if I wanted, um, and free place it around and really come up with some nice cobblestone looks. This is, you know, there's validity to free placement to get artistic look as well. But when I'm building certain things, I absolutely want clean and precise movement. And so that's why I use this method for, for achieving that. Um, and it lets me build um, some things like this or like that bathhouse that I built on there where I've got the logs set at very precise increments um, to get a replicatable pattern um, looking nice. So anyway, thank you very much. This has been an installment of Torden's Laboratory. Hopefully, not too distant future, we're going to get ourselves a new video card. Um, and I could justify um, and we could we'll start doing some streaming right now. Uh, my graphics are not enough to just... The, the graphics in this game are significantly better than my graphics. And so I haven't been doing any live streaming because I didn't want the game to look bad for the universe. It's, uh, tax day is in uh, early access. It's a pretty cool and pretty playable game, even though it's not complete by any stretch of the imagination at this time. But it's been fun to, to do building and experiment and test, which is a thing I like to do, which is why one of the reasons I'm... I've moved here for the time being and am enjoying my journey. So thank you very much for joining me. And until I see you again, please have yourself a fabulous time in whatever game you might choose to play.